everyone, it's Classic DM, and today we're going to continue on with our World War II RPG design, the pre-release uh, musings and system design, and this week I want to talk about something that's very, very important for RPGs, uh, so let's just dig right into it. One of the things you got to do when you're doing an RPG game is everyone always just assumes we're going to start right off the bat, right away, with strength, dexterity, intelligence, agility, all these ability scores, all these statistics. And the thing about that kind of stuff that's kind of weird in a war game, you're playing or in a game that uses people as characters, not, you know, elves and dwarves and drow and all that kind of stuff, is you're going to think to yourself that, well, you know, we need to have some ability scores. Because once we have the ability scores, then we can do things like define, like, well, how good is this guy at shooting and, and how fast can he run and what's his endurance and how many hit points does he have and all that kind of stuff. So I want to change that. I want to change that from a different perspective. I don't want to come to the table with another set of the good old fashioned six ability scores or the UPP profile from Traveler or all the permutated primary statistics and derived statistics from Top Secret or Space Opera. I don't want to, I don't want to take an existing game and relabel a bunch of ability scores. I want to actually really think about what would be fun to play. What would really actually make the game fun to play and also tap into something that's very important, character progression. And the reason why I say character progression is, is important, everything we do in life is about progression. If you want to learn how to play the guitar, the dream is to maybe play this amazing guitar solo like George Lynch or Steve Ray Vaughan or Jimi Hendrix or Jimmy Page, whatever your dream is. But you, and you're willing to kind of go through a many, many years of s sucking or trying to learn and becoming a fan and learning how to play everything to get better and better and better. Same thing with drums, same thing with singing. I'm assuming, same thing with math, with science, and game design is true. You get better and better at game design. You get better at architecture. You get better at basketball. You get better at shooting free throws. So everything in life is about getting better at something. Well, of course, we're chasing the clock that's going to run out on us at the same time. Based on what? Experience. And so the experience we get, even MMA fighters, the experience. We always talk about the more experienced fighter, but then it's going to miss their prime. I want to apply that kind of thinking to this World War II RPG game. So... Let's do away with the basic, same old, same old 1978 basic RPG convention that there will be statistics to define how strong you are, how intelligent you are, how much constitution or mental resilience you have. Um, let's get away from things that say, you're playing this character and this character is only this good looking. So you need to make sure you play the character with this much leadership skill. Let's not pretend we're somebody else. Let's play an RPG game where we are pretending we're the soldier on the battlefield and we're trying to use our own personal wits to simulate what would we do in that situation. But we're going to lean on the epoch of the era and the history and the mechanics and the weapons and the tactics and simulate that in a war game RPG type scenario so we can kind of live vicariously in a romanticized world of this conflict of World War II. And of course we also mentioned before that we're going to take this conflict and, tra and transfer it to many, many different time frames. So we're not glorifying World War II. All wars are bad. All human suffering and killing and murder is bad. But this is the sake of a game and game having conflict. There's always conflict in games. So let's not get on a high horse and start talking about whether we're gonna choose one nation over another. That's not what this is about. The idea is about simulating an RPG game that has projectile firearm combat, that has tactical movement on the same grid they're used to playing in D&D &D, and maybe gives you a twist to D&D. &D. So with that being said, I want to move away from elaborate 3rd edition 3.5 skills or 5th edition skills. I want to move away from the core statistics and looking up lots of things on tables. I want to get right to the point with some elements that I would consider kind of like ability scores or characteristics, but they will be the ones that grow and get better with time. It's kind of like a little Ultima Online. If you ever played Ultima Online, you had strength, intelligence, and dexterity. You know, your strength was your hit points and your strength. Uh, intelligence include how much mana and how smart you were and how well you could pull off a court pour. Um, your dexterity included how you know, fast you were and how much crit you had. So we're, let's go like that route, but a little bit different. So what kind of statistics are we talking about here? Well, right off the bat, you know, if you're going to be a soldier in any conflict, you're going to get better at shooting. And you're going to get better at shooting under fire. Now, you got basic training, you got some shooting, and you're sent to the war, and you don't really get a lot of time to practice. You're having to on the job training in the streets of Stalingrad, on the job training in Bastogne, in North Africa, in the Pacific Theater, wherever it is. You're going to be shooting a weapon under fire using the skills you've been trained with, but you're going to get to a situation where you get better at knowing what you can do as a person under fire in those kind of conditions from different shooting stances, using different type of cover, maybe even using different types of weapons you encounter. So 
the shooting skill, your overall shooting skill, is something that I think you need to start off with. And what you can do when you roll up a brand new character, you can start the game off as a character come straight out of boot camp, right? We can even make it where, okay, we're going to give you a chance to roll a character, we're going to give you an edge, everyone. You've been between one to five seasoned battles, and we'll give you some kind of base percentage number that's a, what's called a shooting skill, right? With firearms, what do you want to call it? So that shooting skill will be a base modifier that we can add to all the other factors. We're going to include a base range number, which is like how good a human being can shoot while prone versus kneeling versus braced versus sh uh, shoulder slung, all the different type of positions of using a rifle or a, a handgun or a machine submachine gun. And then we're going to add to that and subtract from that based on situations like, well, are you peering out the window? Are you taking a knee? How much of this enemy can you see? All those kinds of things. Are you running across the street and moving while you're shooting? So we're going to put those things as situational modifiers. But for the character, just the character, let's just take this one guy right here. Let's take this one German fellow right here. This one German fellow right in the middle of the street, right? Let's put him up here close to the camera next to the, next to the Brits. Get the Brits out of the way here. Here's our German guy by the pool table, right? Our German soldier, a Vermont soldier. This is a North Africa paint scheme. How good is he at shooting? How many firefights has he been in? Well, you give the guy a rifle, you train him how to use it. He's going to have like a basic shooting skill of A. Let's just say A. Over time, he's going to get better. And he's going to get better. He's going to get better at shooting out of a window. He's going to get better at shooting around the edge of a tank tread. He's going to be better at shooting at someone shooting at him. He's going to be better at popping his head up and taking a shot and popping back down. Better at suppressing fire. Um, all these types of things, he's going to get better at that. I'm going to put all that stuff together into one simple skill for now called shooting skill. We could also call it shooting experience, but I want to say the, your, the word experience in the game to describe how much progression you've had, how much seasoning and battle fire you have. All right. The second thing we're going to give this German guy is a reaction time. You come whipping around the corner. This British guy could whip around the corner. You come around the corner. You see him. He sees you. There's going to be kind of a reaction check. This little five foot four German guy is out of scale versus this dude here. It's a different miniature line. In fact, we'll just use this German here. This German with the MP40. This MP40 guy versus this British Eighth Army guy. Um, who's got the better reaction time? Now you could say that. Uh, Michael Jordan versus Tiger Woods versus Conor McGregor versus Jose Aldo. They all have different reaction times, but they're doing that in a different way. They bust their scrugs, right? So when you are a soldier, your base core capacity as a human being to have reaction time is probably starts off with, let's say, C. Okay? And as you get better and better, you get better at moving that weapon. It's like muscle memory. So I'm going to give the character, the player in the game, an opportunity to improve their shooting reaction time based upon muscle memory in the situation, based on how tired they are, how much gear they are, where their canteen's hanging, how much water's in the canteen. So that's savvy with getting your rifle up and coming around a corner and knowing to look ahead of time, the anticipation. I'm going to give you this speed reaction time, Billy, that you can increase as you play the game by gaining experience. So not only the first thing, shooting skill, will get to be increased by playing the game. So we just write these right here. We're going to call this one called SS, shooting skill. You'll be able to increase that with experience, right? And then we'll also have the second one, we'll call it, let's call it a reaction time, reaction time, reaction speed. We'll put that there too. So you're going to be able to increase that as well. Now, the next thing we want to increase is, you know, there's always this level of knowledge and there's always this level of uh, firefight tactics. Now, knowledge kind of means like, hey, that sounds like a Mauser rifle. And that sounds like someone shooting at about 1,000 feet away, which is extremely long range, or maybe it's 100 yards away, which is 300 feet away. Uh, 100 yards away, which is 300, uh, 300 feet away. I mean, you get knowledge based upon what you've encountered and you've seen. So that's another thing I want you to be able to increase is how much knowledge do you have? Can you hear bootsteps running up the stairs in Stalingrad and tell if it's a Russian commissar officer or if it, is it, a, is it a, uh, just a scrub? Is it a guy with a weapon? Is he laden with a lot of gear? So these kind of instinctual assassin type vibe things will be knowledge that you're going to learn over time. Um, so that's something that'll be able to increase as well. So you're going to have knowledge. We're just going to call that K for now. We got SS, shooting skill, reaction, reaction time, and then K for knowledge, right? And sorry, the uh, marker's a little scrubby looking today. So the next thing we want to talk about is the firefight tactics. You heard me mention that a moment ago. Firefight tactics is kind of like you've seen all the moves. You know, if you're a defensive lineman or a, uh, a nose guard in NFL football or college football or high school football, you get to a point where after you've played like about 100 football games where you've kind of seen everyone's offense. And if you watch it on TV and watch all the games, you learn all the offenses. If you're a boxer, you've seen all the attacks. So as you play the game, you get where you learn all the different firefight tactics. And you maybe even get an advantage in situations where Let's say that this, say you're playing the German Bella and you're shooting out this window here at this guy running across the street, right? Let's say this British guy is running across the street here with his Bren gun. 
and you and you know you see him running, you know that if you duck out of the window, embrace yourself, and lean your back shoulder back, and cock that weapon underneath your arm, and raise it to half half aim down sight, but don't close your eye and lead right in front of it and unload the shot, that he's going to run into the bullets. Like that's what I would call firefight tactics. It's not point at the guy and aim and shoot and hope the bullets move at you know 750 to 1200 feet per second and actually hit him. It's firefight tactics. You can tell that when that guy's running across the street that you know he's going for this front door. You know this guy is going to go for this front door. You're trying to lay down fire so he's going to run right into it, right? And when he hears the fire, you even know that he's going to kind of hunk his, hunk his head down and bend down a little bit because he doesn't know where the fire is coming from this way or that way. So you even shoot low enough knowing that your MP40 is going to recoil up. So this is the kind of savvy we're talking about, right? So this is firefight tactics. So we're going to call this FFS, not for fuck's sake, but FFS, and it's not a, de a, a deodorant product. Um, firefight tactics. We'll call it F you know what? FFT. Let's call it FFT. FFT. Firefight tactics. So we got the fourth ability score slash statistic. These are things you can increase while you play the game, improve your character's power, improve your character's ability, their skill at succeeding in combat, right? So the next one we want to do, and we talked about knowledge, so what do we got so far? We got a shooting skill, we got a reaction speed, right? We've got our knowledge, warfare knowledge, we got our firefight tactics. Now there's two last things we want to do which are kind of magical in a way. Not using magic and spells, but they're kind of magical. And what are those things? I'm going to call one of them intuition. Okay? Intuition is kind of like, you always hear your mother's intuition. Intuition is like, you know what? Those guys are going to bolt across the street here real quick. You're in this situation. These Germans are up in this building firing. They're shooting at you. You're shooting at them. You know it's a stalemate. You know that they're not trying to shoot through the wall because you're in a masonry building and they're in a masonry building. You know, you get to a point where you're like, you know, my intuition says that it's going to get dark soon and these guys are probably going to go out the back door. Cops use this all the time. You see it in movies. I don't know whether the cops really use it or not. But you get to a point where, like, tactically, you get a sense, like, the timing of this is such that they're probably going to stop wasting ammo and they're going to do something else. And if I were them, I would do this. So intuition is your ability to kind of think three-dimensionally, not two-dimensionally, um, to predict what might happen next. And I'm going to allow intuition to do something to give you a benefit in certain firefight situations. For example, if, um, if there's a deliberate move where these Germans try to run out the building and go around the corner, that the moment they appear, um, you can say, I want to make an intuition roll to see whether I knew this is going to happen. I may give you a bonus to shoot at them as they're moving because you are already anticipating this. You already knew that they were going to run across the street. You were already thinking in your mind that I'm going to need to be shooting down this way. I'm right-handed. I'm aiming down sight. I'm going to be pulling the gun to my left. And as I do that, I got to make sure I steady my right thumb up against the side of the stock because when I pull this shot, I got to nail this guy and I'm going to have about half a second to do it. So when this guy's trying to whip around the corner and you're this dude here trying to shoot up this window and nail this guy, you've already thought about that. You've already envisioned it in your mind. It's not one of those Luke Rock hold, see and believe things, but it's an intuition. So let's just put that down here as I, okay? I for intuition. The very last one I think we, th we could put in the game that I think will be useful. This, and once again, these are all things you can improve over time when you play the game. You get into more firefights, you su survive firefights. I'm thinking about doing an experience point system where instead of going, oh, you've got 2,320 experience, I'm going to give you a tick mark for each one of these, and then you'll level them up. So maybe there'll just be five points to level each one up to the next tier, and every tier is give you a 5% bonus to shooting. Who knows? So we've got the, uh, we've got the firefight tactics, the, the intuition. Now let's talk about firefight tactics. Now the last one we want to talk about is awareness. So what is awareness? Well, you know, if you think about it, awareness is kind of a human innate ability to do something. Um, are you aware that there's someone pulled into your driveway? Are you aware that that bumping sound across the street is not someone's truck hitting a speed bump? Are you aware that the person behind you is 15 feet behind you and stopping and looking at you without even looking at them? It's like this instinctual sense of what other human beings are doing ar around us. It's not awareness of like, hey, I think I hear an owl in the distance. It's not hearing. It's not hear noise and move silently or anything. So awareness is like a battlefield awareness. So it means that when you are, it's almost like intuition, but it's intuition as it happens. Intuition is like the ability to predict what's going to happen. Awareness is the ability to recognize it's happening right now. Like, hey, it's really silent. I want these guys to do, they called it a mortar strike. We should probably pull back. So when the mortar strikes start happening, maybe you can do an awareness check and you can move at double speed just as quickly because you're already aware of it. Things like that. So we'll allow these, um, what do we got here total? We've got six, let's call them innate soldier abilities or something. Six things that you can improve while you're playing the game. Let's summarize them again really, really quickly here. All right? So the first one is, and let's get these guys out of the way. So let's explain it one more time really quickly, and then we'll be done with this one. ICU, 
this is a German guy. I see you. You see me. Right? Let's get rid of him in the back. I'm here. You're here. I see you. You see me. What's going to do? We're doing an initiative check in D&D. What are we going to do in this situation? We're going to do, we're going to check SS, not SS officers. We're going to check for our, um, uh, uh, shooting skill and speed reaction time. So two things, speed and reaction time. Speed and reaction time probably more so than shooting skill. So let's just backtrack on that real quick. So we're going to do a speed, we're going to do a, a speed reaction time check, which is something that you're going to learn as you... So we'll have a speed reaction ch time check, which will be a modifier um, uh, that you can add to your roll. So maybe we make a, a D100 roll for you and D100 roll for you, but his SRT is uh, rank two, and rank two gives him plus 10%, so he gets plus 20% to his roll. So the higher number wins, that kind of situation. So it's not SRT like a, uh, a Mopar car or something. The next one we have is a shooting skill. So when the actual shot gets fired, and we're checking for the range and the weapon type and all that kind of stuff, which is going to be the most complicated in the game because there's no armor class, we're going to have a shooting skill modifier. So this guy's going to use the MP40 for a long time. His shooting skill modifier will give him bonuses. All right, so all these values are going to be positive values. So he's going to have a better chance of hitting this British fellow if he's using that weapon often. Um, we also talked about things like uh, uh, firefight tactics. So his firefight tactics would be a situation where, like, I know that when I shoot the MP40 uh, and through the doorway like this, how to hold the weapon, how to effectively shoot through the doorway, knowing this guy's probably going to back behind the doorway the moment he hears the first rounds go out, so I'm actually going to shoot in a way to hit him as he's moving into the shot. Um, so the firefight tactics is the third one, firefight tactics, which is something you learn over time with experience. And then we have the more magical type of things like knowledge and intuition and awareness. So the, uh, the knowledge is also something, the more knowledge you have, you'll be able to glance at the soldier at a, in a moment's notice and see how weighted down he is with a bedroll and equipment, how tired he is, how dirty he is, what kind of rifle he's using, how many rounds do you think he's probably had so far, is his unit nearby, his morale ability, all those types of things. You get a sense of like, I'll, it'll give you confidence in taking shots at this guy because you know how to predict his human movement. It's like playing against a chess player who you've studied a long time, right? Um, and then we'll have things like the intuition and the, and the awareness as well mixed in there. So in summary, we have um, a speed reaction time. We have a shooting skill. We have a firefight tactics. Then we have knowledge, intuition, and awareness. So all those types of things together will be things you can improve with your character as you play and survive firefights and get in combat situations. What I'm thinking about not doing is we're not going to have a situation where like you've discovered a secret door. It's not going to be like D&D. &D. We're not going to give you experience just for kills. We're going to give you experience for surviving firefights. If you successfully shoot and wound another soldier, we might increase your shooting skill. Um, we want to also increase your firefight tactics, but we may not increase your awareness or intuition. So it depends what happens. So what will happen is at the end of every firefight, we'll do we'll, we'll have an experience system where we give you we're going to give you uh, three tick marks for firefights, one tick mark for this, one tick mark for intuition, one tick mark always for knowledge, and we're just going to give you speed reaction time. Didn't really happen this fight, so we're not going to give you any bonuses to that because you weren't really pressed on it. But lastly, we're going to give you an awareness point of one. And maybe we say, listen, if you get to five points, you go up a level. Give you two, two three, four, five, you go up a level. Give this is two, another four fights, you get a level. So. What we'll do is the more experience you get, the more football games, the more MMA fights, the more boxing you get underneath your belt, the more you're going to level up. And every time you get those levels up, suddenly you're going to be better at being effective as a soldier. And that's what we're thinking right now. We're going to get the stuff written up, and next time we'll share that kind of knowledge with you guys in a written format. And ultimately, we'll have this whole thing put together, and uh, we'll be able to share it and distribute it to everyone to have uh, some cool RPGs set in World War II. Thanks for listening, and uh, we'll talk to you later.